we'd like to thank Cobra Garden and Mr Fothergills for their continued support with pots and trowels. On today's pots and trowels we're going to be recycling grass clippings and getting started with flowers for the cutting garden. If you've got a lawn you'll know that from the late April, May and into June it's a busy time mowing because that's when the grass is growing at its fastest and if you mulch it's not a problem because you're going to recycle the clippings every time you mow but if you use a collector, a bag on the back of your mower then each week when you do cut the grass you're going to get loads of lovely fresh clippings. Now if you're struggling to get rid of them in your green bin or landfill there are ways that you can recycle them in the garden so we're just going to look at a few ways that you can put them to good use. A really good way is in the veg garden if you've got raspberry canes or any fruit bushes like black currants or gooseberries that type of thing then these make an excellent mulch and all you need to do is to make sure you've watered the ground first the golden rule is you never mulch on dry soil because when it does rain the water can't get through the mulch so water them first so the soil's nice and moist and then it's literally just a case of getting fresh grass clippings and just putting some of them around the base of the plants all the way down the row and you don't need several inches just a couple of inches is all that you need and that will just seal in the moisture and help the plants grow more likewise if you've got some trees or shrubs in the borders you can use them exactly the same way water them first put a mulch round and the good thing is by the end of the season these will have completely rotted down the nitrogen that's in these grass cuttings will have been recycled back into the soil so it helps to feed your plant and your plants will grow much better as a result of it but of course the other way you can use them is to put them on the compost heap so we're going to have a look at that now now compost bins come in all different shapes and sizes I've made my own they're a bit Heath Robinson they're just made out of some trellis panels here just nailed together and it just holds all the waste in there but you know the plastic ones that you get are perfectly okay to use as well especially if you've not got a big garden I generate quite a lot of waste and at the moment we've been getting the last of the dry leaves out we're deadheading daffodils so it's all quite dry in there and that dry matter on its own wouldn't rot down without moisture. So grass cuttings are perfect for that. And all you need to do is to mix your grass cuttings roughly half and half with all this dry material. So just tip them in like that. And then if you don't want to use your hands, just use a fork, but just mix them together. So you've got your wet and dry ingredients there and if you still feel it's a bit dry just put a can of water on there and then the grass will heat up, it will moisten the dry content and it will rot down much much faster and that way you'll get lovely compost and it's getting rid of all your grass cuttings from the lawn. part of my vegetable garden I always like to grow a few cut flowers because they look nice we can take them into the house and enjoy them but they're good for attracting bees and pollinators into the garden as well and what I tend to do is little blocks at the end of each bed and, and some around the edge just to spread them around a bit and one type that I grow a lot of are what we call hardy annuals they only live for one season but hardy means we can sow them directly into the garden and they'll stand a little bit of frost so perfect now to sow them towards the end of April they're going to grow and by July they're going to be in full flower and you've got things like amaranthus and scabious, cosmos, larkspur, um, sunflowers all of those make ideal cut flowers and the way to sow them is literally just to rake the ground prepare it as if you sow in any seed and then using a trowel just take out a shallow drill about half an inch deep sow the seeds really thinly along that row and then cover them over water them and then put another row in maybe a foot apart and you can sow blocks of them that way and then as they grow you can thin them out and space them out so really good way to get them going to start with but if you don't want to be sowing them all the time there are some perennials that we can put in the garden as well that you leave in that come back year after year some of them you can grow from seed one that I grow is one called Agastache uh, it looks a bit like a nettle leaf but it doesn't sting you very ornamental and this is a mixed one that's got lovely mauve and white sort of 
columns of flowers that last really well in water, at least a week, 10 days in a vase. So they're good to grow. Again, we start them off from seed, but then you can buy plants of things. Uh, this is one that's a bit old fashioned in a way, but a really lovely cut flower. This is pyrethrum, a lovely daisy flower, pinks and whites. These were grown from seed last year and they've now produced little plants that I can put out and they will flower for me and they come back year after year. This is a lovely scabious uh, that I've grown in the garden before. Some of them you grow every year from seed, but this is a true perennial. You just cut it down in the spring. This is a lovely new growth and these have lovely sort of white or pink flowers depending on the variety you're growing and they just flower all summer long. So you get masses and masses of flowers. And another one that I've been starting to grow in the garden is this one, Alstromeria. These last ages in water, they'll last two weeks in a vase and these are a herbaceous perennial and it dies down in the winter and this is the new growth. This is one that's got a lovely sort of bronzy foliage. will grow to about two to three feet tall and just flower and flower and flower. So there's loads of ways that you can get cut flower going into the garden and just enjoy it and make your garden look so much better. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trowels and for telling your friends about it. And remember, it's free to follow us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. Next time, I'll be back in the veg garden and planting the dahlias that I lifted in the autumn. Till then, keep safe and keep gardening.